What makes Rob a special person is that he's incredibly pure of heart. He's very humble. He's very selfless. He has this kind of quiet advocacy that I think is very powerful. Just a couple of days after the first case was uh, discovered in West Africa, uh, myself and my colleague went to Conakry, Guinea uh, as clinicians for WHO, and uh, that was our first entry into the West African Ebola outbreak. Prior to this outbreak, um, uh, Ebola typically had very high mortality rates, upwards of 70% in previously reported outbreaks in Central Africa and also in East Africa. You know, Ebola has this, uh, this mystery associated with it as an almost certain killer from someplace in Central Africa. People are unable to eat or drink. Meanwhile, they're losing a lot of fluids because they can't retain fluids in their body and they get very dehydrated. In the setting of where it's almost 50 degrees Celsius inside these incredibly hot personal protective equipment suits in the red zone, I think there wasn't as much of a focus on making sure that there were IVs put in, making sure there was aggressive volume resuscitation prior to the approach that Rob and the frontline healthcare workers in Guinea and the doctors from Médecins Sans Frontières had taken. And that's how we focused our care in the first months of the outbreak in trying to keep people uh, hydrated when they weren't able to take oral rehydration solution and to start an IV and to try to fix the things that we could fix, reverse the things that that were reversible as a means to buy time so that the virus may be cleared by the body's own immune system. This is an approach that we take in North America to addressing people who have sepsis. Um, but in the setting of Ebola, it's something that had really not been championed before. And as the outbreak progressed, and as health workers gained more and more experience providing individual patient care, we could see that the mortality was changing over the course of this outbreak from 70% to 50% to 40% to under 20% in the environments that were able to provide care for patients the way that we would hope we could in, in, in Toronto and Canada. Rob was a quiet but a very important player in how, for example, the guidelines that the WHO had published around management of viral hemorrhagic fever changed. There's a real shift towards um, pushing this aggressive supportive management model where, with the IVs and the aggressive fluid resuscitation and the electrolyte monitoring. And that now is really considered standard of care for Ebola management. Um, and there's thousands of people, clinicians who've de now developed experience through this outbreak, um, who've been trained in managing Ebola in that way. At the beginning of this outbreak, I had never seen a patient with Ebola. I treated patients with SARS, I treated patients with lots of bad infections. But again, this was a new experience for me. It's terrific that the Royal College every year acknowledges this kind of work, and I feel privileged to be a recipient, but really a recipient on behalf of so many people that do this sort of work every day.